This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. <laughs> well, that story was unnecessary. There's a subspecies of woman distinguished by an excessive kind of helpfulness, the burning desire to take care of other people's problems. Within a few days of entering this school, I had a rough idea that Suo Amane fit this busybody woman classification. But I have to admit, I wasn't expecting her to extend her meadowing to me quite so quickly. Although I suppose it's inevitable that we'd run into each other a lot since we live in the same dorm, it seems like she's coming up to me at every free moment and playing the big sister. I don't think she's playing the big sister. I think she's playing, like, the I desperately want to sleep with you card. I wish she'd put herself in my shoes. It's not easy having to politely shoot her down every time. Not wasting any time, are you? I'm not sure how she got the idea in her head, but lately every time a break begins, Amine's been clinging to me from behind. Oh, forever. Then forcefully pressing her oversized lumps of breast blubber against me as if to say, Check it out, I'm the big Obob's character. The way they droop just a little is very popular with the enthusiasts. Oh, and now she's sexually harassing us. Wow, she actually might be worse girl. Look, you're heavy. How? She might actually be worse than the girl who is flat out trying to murder us. Or at least tried to murder us. Look, you're heavy. Remove your chest flap from my head. I hate people sexually harassing me. On the contrary, I'm something of a fan. No. That's quite a jump from going, I don't want to be sexually harassed by women, to saying, oh, you must be gay. I'd prefer that. If a man sexually harasses me, at least I can knock him flat without feeling guilty about it. That's also true! <laughs> what do you want from me? If you have something to say, then spit it out already. Big sisters don't sexually harass their brothers. <laughs> Good sisters don't. Thanks, sis. But I'm a big boy now. Could you please get lost? <laughs> oh, she is the worst. Oh, she is the worst. Stop that. I'm a dainty little thing. I'll break more easily than you'd think. <laughs> and, of course, nobody cares about this because it's like, Oh, it's a pretty girl who's, like, giving you attention. How could you not love it? Easy. They say a snapping turtle won't release prey from its bite, even if lightning strikes nearby. Amine is a similar beast. Once she clings to me, my only release is the sound of the bell. If this woman kept a pet cat, I'm positive it would go bald from stress within a week. <laughs> I'm not confident my own hair will be safe if I allow these assaults to continue. I think it's about time I get my message across, even if it requires taking a somewhat harsh attitude. Yeah, you can be harsh. Amine, that's about enough. As, just as I begin to shout, Sakaki appears with spectacular timing. <laughs> Clearly she does. Yumiko grimaces at Amine's response. Her glare is expressive. I, who are you supposed to be? Thank you, Yumiko. Yay! Don't mind me. Amine is your best girl? I mean, I see why people would like her. I, I have very different, like, standards, though, than others. Oh, boy. Thank you, Yumiko! I appreciate that. She finally released me. What a noisy woman. Oh, what? What do you mean? Disagree. I would take incredibly timid over sexual harassment. You make it sound like you're familiar with her past. Have you known Amine that long? It's probably longer than the others. So Amine wasn't always like this. 
I just don't understand the woman. Why does she drape herself all over me like that? Because we're the one guy. <laughs> I did. Just the other day, having stocked up on necessities for my new dorm life at the local supermarket, I was wandering leisurely around the area in front of the station. Don't call me that. Spare me. I can't get any cuter than I already am. All the other girls will get jealous and start picking on me. <laughs> like who? I'm gonna point it at the plastic supermarket bag dangling from my hand. Mmm, dental floss. Tasty. Look, you don't start rifling through my bag. But is, is, is it as high quality? You're as knowledgeable as always. Do you wander around comparing prices all day long? Hmm, she's got an impressive devotion to economizing. I felt definite admiration, since my master was the sort of wild woman who bought things without even looking at the price tag. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. What if we have a bidet? Well, I'm not that caught up on the price. I appreciate the thought, but I just want a store that's convenient. It's all well and good to wander around looking for bargains, but when you consider the increased effort and, con and consumption of the time involved, getting too picky frequently turns into a loss. It's That's true. Mm, Gotta find the balance. That's right. I'll be going. Yeah, I did finish my shopping. As soon as the words left her mouth, Amine was standing by my side, firmly grasping my hand. What do you think you're doing? This, of course. In demonstration, I raised the hand that Amine had gripped, or rather, captured, her fingers entwined tightly with mine. What am I, a kid who won't go home unless Mama pulls him there? I've got to admit, I don't remember acting quite that adorably, so I'm very interested in where you're coming from here. <laughs> yeah, put her on the spot. Still gripping my right hand tightly, Amine raised the forefinger of her other hand against her lip and racked her brains for an answer. No. Oh, is that it? If it's role-playing, then I guess I have to play alone! Ha 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 did you really think I'd say that? Off! Yeah! <laughs> I forcefully yanked my arm free, shaking off Amine's grip. Yeah, I don't like having my hand held by a random girl. If you think that puppy dog face will get me to act nicer out of guilt, you're very wrong. Don't flirt in public! That's a rule of mine. Stop twisting my words. The point is, I can't think of a single reason why I should hold hands with you. Yes! Sorry, bro. It's not an answer to the question why you want to hold hands. So do you hold hands with the girls as well? Hmm. Some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder? What sort of accident was it? She's making this up. The hell? As she spoke, Amine took my hand for the second time. Joking? When did the joke start? Ugh, this is irritating. Take the left, at least. I can't calm down when someone's got a hold on my dominant hand. Boys and girls who are just friends don't hold hands. Why get friendly with me? Hard to say, didn't have any. 
じゃあ逆に聞くけどどうして私じゃダメなのかな I don't like those quotation marks. I wouldn't say I don't. I just want to understand your motive. ならいいじゃない。仲良くしましょうよ。You're a weird one. うちの学校で変じゃない子って一人もいないよ。Yeah, she's, she's not wrong. I'm going back. うん、帰ろう。Having moved to my left as I requested, Amine didn't mess around any further. On our way back, she calmly acted her age. Holding hands really did seem to be enough to satisfy her. Dots did run through my head. Considering it's only been a few days since we met, she's bizarrely friendly. But still, as she is a member of our class full of special cases. Despite her relatively normal facade, Amine must have her own unhappy circumstances. This hand holding may well have some meaning for her. I guess it's possible. Maybe I'm overreacting about the hand holding, but still. <laughs> うやむやのうちに黙認していたら、最近富に目に余るほど、過剰な接触をするようになった。Well, then we're, then we're gonna draw a very clear line in the sand of what is acceptable behavior. We'll make a detective of you yet. 何を偉そうに。Sakaki, what sort of accident was Amine involved in? 知らないわ。If it's not something you can talk about, I'll leave it alone. そうじゃなくて、本当に知らないのよ。あまり興味もないしでも文字通り交通事故だったという話ね That's why you need to not go so fast on your motorcycle for... <laughs> when going on the highway A car crash? なんでも彼女が乗っていたバスが事故を起こしてそれが原因で Oh jeez という話を聞いたことはあるけれど Magic school bus, how could you? 手をつなぎたがる癖があるなんて話は Alright, so she's just using that. Then why was she so persistent about it? If you told me which route is going to get dark, does that count as spoilers? Um, please, please don't warn me about any routes ahead of time. I have no idea. I have no idea how many of the routes I'm going to do. I definitely want to do Sachi's route, and I probably will do Michiru's route. Not sure about the other three. Does bad eyesight make you want to hold hands? <laughs> Is she blind? A plausible theory, but I'm having a hard time buying it in her case. In the first place, are her eyes that terrible? Yumiko's actually getting more friendly with us, even though she still has that perma scowl on her face. <laughs> I'm just wasting my breath talking to you. And just like that, she's back to Krabby. Hmm, I guess we're done here. Or we would be if I hadn't just spotted Kominasachi out of the corner of my eye. Hey, Sachi, do you have a minute? Hi, what is it? Do you know anything in particular about Amine's past? Wow, we're just trying to dig real deep, aren't we? Hmm, so in other words, nobody knows the whole story. Yeah! Uh-huh. True enough. Oh, is this school for, like, the mentally ill or something? Does everybody have a mental illness? It's possible. As long as the person in question doesn't want to discuss it, I suppose I shouldn't pry any further. And in the first place, I'm a little dubious that Amine's past really has anything to do with holding her my hand. Yes, I'm a dude, and the only dude. Hmm. That's taking things in a new direction. Specifically, what do you think I did? I'm like 99% sure that didn't happen. <laughs> What's so funny? Well, whatever. Neither rings a bell. I have no memories of us being lovers in a previous life either. <laughs> Ouch! Well, 
クラスメイトの男子とそういうデートじみたことがしてみたかっただけなのではないでしょうか。Honestly, that's kind of the theory I'm going towards. You think so? Hmm. Incidentally, Sachi, does that mean you've got an interest in holding hands and going on a date with me as well? <laughs> wow. I feel like the, the protagonist is like pretty hardcore trying to pursue Sachi. Like, he's already asked a lot of questions that are very leading that he's interested in her. No, 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 we're not doing that. Hmm, I see. Thank you for your valuable opinion. I'll file it under not helpful in the slightest. How about you, Sakaki? Considering she's tried to murder us, I think she'd be adverse to the idea. Right. Got any interest? <laughs> You've tried to kill me! I think we're past the point of you need to be nice around me. I get the picture. Thanks so much for your compassion. So in the end, asking around didn't get me anything resembling a clear answer. From what Sakaki says, it doesn't seem like Amine wants to hold hands indiscriminately. The mystery's only deepened. Also, where is Michiru for all of this? <laughs> oh boy. Just at that moment, Amine enters the classroom, pulling Makina by the hand, oblivious to our gossiping. I point my thumb towards the pair and their connected hands. You said Amine doesn't have a habit of holding hands, right? <laughs> that checks out. Sakaki watches Amine and Makina as she speaks. Suddenly, she claps her hands together as if struck by a burst of insight. Say what? Wait, what? I've been put in the same category? With a kid like this whom you half expect to get lost tottering after a butterfly? What a seriously unpleasant thought. I'd say Yuji is the most competent person here. Actually, no, that was Sachi. <sighs> Sachi is definitely the most competent. I appreciate that you're probably trying to help, but that's basically an indirect way of saying you look like a hopeless man. Hmm? Yep. Sakaki, could you please stop rubbing salt in the wound without even realizing it? It kind of stains. Mind answering one last question for me. Is there even a single normal person in this school? Even the principal ain't normal. True enough. Don't think you've got some special variety of unhappiness. Sensing the admon... The admonition beneath Sakaki's words, I feel the stirrings of something like shame. Whether it's normal or not, the student life isn't bad in its own way. I've started to like this place enough to reach that conclusion. Well, good for you, Yuji. Alright, a hobby is a window that gives you a fresh perspective on the world. Or so my sister said. But when I was a kid, struggling for my daily life was about all I could handle. I disliked and avoided change, even when it might have brought me something new. So my sister's recommendation was to at least try reading books. That sister of mine was an unbelievably voracious bookworm herself, and she began to push the one she finished on me. I soon picked up a reading habit, although I didn't find any particular meaning in it at the time. My sister is dead now, as are my parents and my master, yet I'm still reading. I bet he killed them all! The sister who taught me to read books, the parents who weren't angry at me when I was reading books, and the master who praised me for reading books, buying me as many as I wanted. I'm grateful to them now, since I've found some meaning in the act of reading. Kazami-kun. Hmm? <laughs> I got as many moments for you as you want, baby. <laughs> yeah. I turn around in response to Yumiko's greeting and find her carrying a sizable load of paperback and hardcover books. Sure. Appreciate it, as always. One of those is going to be rigged with a box cutter. <laughs> 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 
As anyone with a long-term reading habit is well aware, books pile up before you know it. That said, it's hard to just throw them away, and selling them to a used bookstore feels disrespectful to the offer. The idea was to find another avid reader to dump them on. Incidentally, before I came, Sakaki had apparently been pushing the books she finished onto the library. By now, she's established her own private shelf in there, full of pleasure reads. Most likely, she spotted me by coincidence as she was carrying her books there, and figured she could save herself the walk. Heavy, right? Here. I slide my hands under the books Sakaki is carrying. Watch it! Don't take your hands off yet, the books are going to fall. Why are you blushing? You hate me. Of course it is. Don't worry, my hygienic standards are higher than you might expect. <laughs> I wash my hands at least once a month. You complain too much. Alright, I've got a hold on them. You can let go. <laughs> yes, I did! That's so. Anyway, I'll, grace, I'll gratefully read the books. When I finish one, I'll return it to the Sakaki collection. So if you want to reread any of them, they'll be in the library. I probably should get more into reading myself. Yeah. I take a quick look at the titles of the books I'm holding. Sohei Akai, The Decisive Pudding Battle. Kumabata Takeru, Yesterday's Black Cat. Hirayo Atsuko, The Exit of the Desert. Sanao Takumi, Professor Takeda's Dinner. Ethan Crow, An Insolent Woman. Shunonome Kazuma, You Blew It, Amori. Although she reads quite a variety of genres and offers, it seems that Sakaki fundamentally likes whodunits. Of the six books she passed me, four are mysteries. Come to think of it, I could easily see Sakaki sitting at a detective's desk, using her brains for a living. Flipping open one of the books, I speak toward the shadow of a nearby pillar. Makina, how long do you plan on hiding there? <laughs> I'm not mad or anything. How about you come out? <laughs> Your aura is too crude. I can sense you even when you're hidden. <laughs> I just said that for the hell of it. You were casting a shadow on the floor. I could tell it was you from the height and that shaggy head. Yeah, you need to play more Metal Gear. Pretty much. Why were you hiding in the first place? You don't get along with Sakaki? I don't think Yumiko likes anybody that much. Hmm. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure Sakaki said something like, I think Irisu-san avoids me on purpose. You're in a state of mutual wariness. Well, I suppose that does happen sometimes. Sakaki, a guarded person who doesn't reveal her thoughts easily, and Makina, who feels most secure when she's burrowed her, her way into someone's heart. Their personal comfort zones may be incompatible. Well, it's foolish to expect everyone to get along with everyone else in the entire world. There's no need to forcibly push those two together. But, at the very least, maybe a mutual compromise is called for. I don't think Sakaki dislikes you, Makina, so try not to hate her yourself. Uh, that's true. I see. Good question! Well, if there's one thing Harvest Moon Tommy, it's that he probably gave her a piece of cake every day for like five months straight. Well, it's not like we're particularly close, but we have a common interest in books, so I guess that helped get things started. Of course, I get the idea Sakaki mostly views me as a little more than a convenient book disposal. After all, it's hard to say you're friendly with someone who scowls so bluntly just because your hands touch. Makina, do you have any hobbies? Shumi? Solo? That's not good. That, no, that does not sound lewd. No. Also, no. <laughs> Single drop of sweat. 
At the company I work at, solitary hobbies are fundamentally discouraged. They place a lot of stress on keeping up some form of communication with others. When it comes to the interests of the employees, the basics are alcohol, women, and gambling. But it's a bit difficult to own up to that in front of the boss. Yeah, those free hobbies are all... not great. Therefore, when asked, some of them just came up with a safe-sounding conventional hobby like Shogi or Go. Okay. When the superiors reacted favorably to those answers, the end result was that the hobbies column in the employee survey data recorded an overwhelming number of Shogi buffs. Although going with the flow is pretty much the defining Japanese characteristic, it's still something of a pathetic story. Well, having given them as a nice, safe hobby like reading myself, I guess I can't really say too much. Mm. Nothing, just talking to myself. Incidentally, once you're the one giving the surveys out, in other words, an executive type, the hobby of choice would, buy, uh, would be gardening. Not something you can do when you're living out of a barracks. Are you a soldier? I'm pretty sure you're a soldier in the army, then. Yeah, it's pretty. It's better to have some interests than not, even if they're really worthless. For example, the aforementioned employees and their wine, women, and song. Even then, if they can help you find a single common interest of someone, your hobbies are worthwhile as social lubricant, even if they're worthless in every other respect. I guess that's kind of valid. This is something I heard secondhand from a senior employee at my job. But sometimes you get cases like this. Oh no, not another backstory. <laughs> At least we get the cool music. This is a story about a man who took a business trip to Gifu Prefecture. It was a group expedition, and the purpose of field testing uh, new equipment that had just been deployed throughout the company. At the time, the man in question was a new employee, not even out of his training period. Nonetheless, he found himself taking a long, bumpy ride into the mountains on a company bus, accompanied by the chief of his special department. The man didn't have the first clue why he had been selected for the trip, let alone why he was expected to do uh, what he was expected to do on it. To make matters worse, he was sitting next to a powerful superior that he barely knew. In short, the man was about, to re was about ready to vomit from sheer terror and anxiety. He fought desperately to keep calm, but his face was pale as a sheet. The bus finally reached its destination at the foot of Mount Kinka in Gifu after many unpleasant hours. But the man's relief was temporary, as his boss informed him that they would be attending a large banquet in high class in that night. Oh boy. Corporate banquets are basically a cruel kind of talent show. New employees were expected to perform some skill for the amusement of the gathered VIPs. The newbies from each department mounted the stage one after the other. Quite a few croaked out popular karaoke ballads with stiff faces, but there were also some pretty competent juggling acts. Even one stand-up comedy duo, which got some laughs do, uh, doing imitations of the superiors. The man watched the other acts with a fluttering heart. His turn was fa approaching fast, but... He was basically a walking, breathing lump of artistic incompetence, and a social type without a single talent worth performing in front of others. Just as he was wondering whether he could escape by pretending a sudden illness, the man was practically kicked out onto the stage by the senior employees. For lack of a better thought, he started to sing. But the man didn't know any popular songs. Worse, he couldn't remember any of the standard folk songs or children's music that might have worked in a pinch. The man went instead with the theme song from a superhero TV show, Lightspeed General Daim Karaf, which he'd loved as a kid. By this point, he couldn't help but feel a growing sense of despair. This was, of course, the man's first time seen it in public, and he didn't have much of a voice. Within moments, he was showered in jeers from the audience. The hell are you singing? What's with you? Hey, asshole, are you just making that up on the spot? That's enough! Get off the stage! You suck! Although he wasn't the type to break down in tears, the man felt the deep urge to dig himself into a hole and crawl into it. Only sheer stubbornness carried him through to the last humiliating note. When it was over, the man quickly bowed from the stage and raced back to his seat. And the purpose of that was what? On that walk back from the stage, the man had a thought. I wish I'd learned a popular song or two. Mm, well, if you look at it that way, you're right. But the story isn't over yet. Of course it's not. With the equipment test wrapped up, the man had returned to his new assignment as a branch office in Shizuoka. At a branch office in Shizuoka. He was the office. Someone called out to him as he was dealing with the transfer paperwork. So you were the newbie who's saying, Daim Karaf at the banquet in Gifu. The man's breath caught in his throat. He'd figured out by now that the main job of his superiors was to flaunt their authority by picking up the smallest mistakes and then rubbing his nose in them. 
and the manager speaking to him was infamous for his zealous leadership of his underlings. Frankly, the man was about ready to pee his pants. He swallowed and chewed his lips, uh, chewed his lip, just one of them. Bitter thoughts running through his head. What's he going to blame on me? How long do I have to grovel? But the manager's words took him by surprise. I loved that show when I was a kid! The man blinked, dumbfounded by this unexpected development. You from Hiroshima, kid? According to the manager, dime cutoff reruns were played relentlessly every weekday afternoon on the local, on the local station. In other words, practically every child in Hiroshima grew up watching that show. But the man wasn't a Hiroshima native. In the area he lived in as a child, the Children's Encore Theater program would broadcast old episodes of the show every summer. He'd just happened to see a few. Even so, the manager must have been really pleased to find a fellow Dime Cutoff fan, as he began to pull a few strings to the man's benefit. One night after work, the man returned into his bed in the company dorm to find that a white plastic bag had been tucked underneath the sheets on his neatly made bed. He didn't remember putting it there himself, and when he asked around, nobody else had any idea where it had come from. The bag contained a huge jelly roll and a cup of instant ramen. As a new employee, the man had to eat dinner at a set time of 5 p.m. By 10 p.m., lights out, lights out time at the dorm, all of the trainees would be starving. This supplemental meal was therefore a very considerate present. The man had an idea who was responsible. Most likely, his Daimkarov buddy at the top was the only one who could have pulled it off. Atop of the early dinner time, learning the ropes as a trainee is particularly tiring. His Daimkarov buddy had probably figured he'd have a hard time getting his young body to fall asleep on an empty stomach. The man actually didn't have a particularly big appetite, and wasn't the type to be troubled by irregular meals. But then again, as a new employee, he didn't have much money he could spend freely on snacks and such. A little sugar was extremely welcome. If I get caught, they'll be punished too. So the man split the smuggled food with the other trainees in his room, and they all devoured their shares greedily. As the presents from his Dimecroft buddy, at the time they were known as the Dimecroft Supply Drop, continued, that talentless, quiet, and hobbyless triple threat contender for the so a social crown suddenly found himself getting along with the group in the dorm, all thanks to the Dimecroft connection. And three months later, when the man's training period had come to end, it was once again his Dimecroft buddy whose recommendation got him assigned to the Chiba branch office he'd hoped for. So does that have any purpose whatsoever in the context of the game, or is this just a very long game filled with a lot of fluff? In other words, when it comes to hobbies and interests, anything is fine. Finding friends you can talk about some common interest with is a really valuable thing. Sometimes something that small can be the trigger for gaining a huge luck up in life. That's the moral of the story. Oh, <laughs> Da, da Macaroon is a different superhero. I thought this was a pretty meaningful story. I guess it didn't quite get across. Well, more or less. When you're young, you should mess around with all sorts of things. Just try to find something that grabs you, even if it's stupid crap. After all that spacing out, that's a pretty sharp question. I glance down towards the pile of borrowed books I'm holding in my hands. I suppose right now I don't have anything other than reading that qualifies. <laughs> now we gotta find a bakery. You aren't really listening to a word I say, are you? Well, not to say that you need to. <laughs> Alright, we gotta find a good bakery then. Go get Amine to make something. Um, do I have to? Yeah, if I'm in the mood. I see. I learned my own lesson from this conversation. If there's a mention of food in the middle of a story, Machina won't remember another word. I'll have to be more careful next time.